Okay, hello. We are going to play a little demo here. Now this game is, uh, well, it's uh, just a demo of an actually unfinished game. Uh, this is up on uh, uh, Kickstarter. I backed this um, a couple weeks ago, actually, before the Kickstarter got to uh, where it is. It's getting close to being done. There's a few days left. So I decided, hey, I've had this sitting on my desktop for a while. Sitting there, looking at me. Hmm. When am I going to find the time to play it? So, I'm going to start it up here, and let's give this a shot, and see what this demo, uh, what it has in store for us. Keep in mind, unfinished game, just a demo for it. And I will have a link to uh, the uh, Kickstarter if you wish to uh, see more information. You can always ask questions to them as well. I will link their uh, Twitter account as well if you have any questions for them. But let's start this up. Did he let me live? Why? Didn't he kill me too? Well, it looks like there was one some bloody mess right there. That car. That one went squash. That's what it looks like. <laughs> he knows full well that I won't rest until I find him and make him pay for the crimes he caused. I still remember the smell of gasoline, and the sound of an ambulance from the day of the event, and the words of a policeman. It wasn't an accident. Ah! I'm sick of it. The police are helpless. They've been chasing this guy for a year now. For what? They've got nothing. Again with the Phantom? Look, let's just leave it to the police. And they have a profile and they're doing their best. Besides, we don't have enough people to conduct this. Would you stop staring at me like that? <laughs> oh, staring! Staring at him! Jeez, it's enough that you're rambling on and... You don't have to look at me like that. I don't make the decisions here. Well, but you know, Suzumi really likes you. She could totally pull some strings and find out. I'm not talking to her about this. Man, just think about it, please. The Phantom's been dodging the police for a year now, and he he's getting better at leaving behind no evidence. This case can think... help out our organization. It'll put us on the map. I think there's a little mistake right there. I think he just said year, but it says months right there. Not interested. He's probably just another wannabe that wants to be popular. Serial killers are a dime a dozen here. And what about the Zodiac Killer? Mm -hmm. The Zodiac Killer! Oh no, the Zodiac Killer! I didn't say all serial, serial killers are petty. Please, at least look at the files. I know you. You're better than me at observing details. I might have overlooked something here. Besides, it's not like you have anything else to do. Suzumi closed your case just now, remember? Burglar enters, gets killed by the homeowner. How exciting. Yeah, how exciting. What's that sarcasm? Sounded like sarcasm to me. Sounded like he was a little sarcastic there. How exciting! It wasn't the burglary that did him in. He wanted to run away with the guy's wife for crying out loud. After hearing a loud sound, the homeowner smashed his head with a baseball bat and then planted some evidence. Yeah, yeah, tossed the gun, claimed he did it in self-defense, got 25 years in jail, yada yada yada. Look! This Phantom case is way more exciting than whatever home invasion case you've got on your plate. I'm not gonna lie. The way that this demo has started off, I'm, I'm lost as hell. What the fuck they're talking about? <laughs> Please. 
for me? All right, all right. Just leave me alone. Look, this guy is a true professional. It's about time we took care of him. I'm sure if you talked with Suzumi, she'd let Eger still handle this guy. I keep handing, handing a few documents. Handing what? Me a few documents? Wait, who's Akito? Is that, is that me? I forgot. I forgot who who the Q main character is or who's who. I don't know who's handing documents to who here. Oh no, I'm lost. Hmm. So he must be Akito. Hmm. Hmm. If your if your documents aren't lying, we're dealing with a professional here. Looks like the first victims were chosen at random with chaotic crime scenes. But now, now it seems that the scenes are clean. And nothing out of the ordinary. It looks like he's uh, getting better with each Steve, victim. I told you, this case is perfect for us. Whatever. Doesn't change the fact that the police can do something about it sooner or later. Really? Sooner or later? Come on, Kazuki. It's been a year. They've been running around in circles like a dog chasing its tail. They've done nothing. If we take this case, we'd be doing more than they ever could. At the very least, we could find his methods. Find his methods. Methods? You really think we can find something like that? It's based on your findings. It seems like the victims are getting picked randomly. Concentrate on the victim's personality one at a time. Don't you think they've got anything in common? Come on, Kazuki. You gotta admit I'm right. Someone randomly gets murdered in his house? Okay, that's a pattern. You know that's not what I meant. Uh, I told you to give me a break. Akito, cutting someone's arteries with the sharpened CDs, then pouring all the blood to the back to finally paint the wall isn't a pattern. The what I... What the hell? Who, who? That's an interesting weapon. Broken CDs. <laughs> Something out of a horror movie, maybe. But it isn't a pattern. Seems like a horror movie to me. Not really a, maybe a horror movie per se, but maybe a, a slasher film or something. It's clear that this murderer has some psychological problems. He's very satisfied with what he does and keeps learning how to excel at it. Okay, then how do you explain someone getting murdered by getting poisoned through a valley lily? What's a valley lily? I'm not sure what a valley lily is. Please, you need to talk with Suzumi. Do it for me. Who is this Suzumi you talk of? Is she a cute girl? What a convincing argument. Look, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Oh, oh? I have a theory that the Phantom might be related to your parents' death. Oh. So his parents, from what I can get here, died from this car crash here? But apparently it wasn't an accident. And pigs fly. Look, that theory just came out of nowhere. Why are you telling me this now? And that's such a low blow. 
using my parents' tragedy to get my sympathies. And I've finally come to terms with how my parents died, and you tell me something like this? I couldn't convince you otherwise. I don't want to build up your hopes, but I really think this could be related somehow. Besides, if we don't solve this case now, we'll never be able to prove my theory anyways. It wouldn't hurt. I love how you're so peachy opening up a wound like that. I don't know what you're planning, but if I persuade her, will you finally get off my back? Well, yeah. We could even work together. just said you'd be getting off my back, not working with me. Suddenly the door on the roof opens and someone walks in. Is it the person that we're uh, talking about? Suzumi or Suzu? I don't know, Su Suzu someone? Oh no, no, that's not the person. That's someone else. Aki. Oh. Kind of cute. You look tired, sis. Oh, look, look, sis. Aki, Akito, <laughs> Aki, Akito. I don't know if I would name both of my children that. It'd be kind of confusing if you started off Aki and then didn't finish, and they're like, "Oh, did you say me?" <laughs> Have you been getting enough sleep? If we ran all the way up here, you look like me. Hi! Hey. Guess what, sis? Kazuki said he talked to Suzumi about the Phantom. We're gonna solve this case in no time. Is your brother always like this? Besides, it's up to Suzumi, not us. Perfect. We can all work on this case together. That's not what I meant. Sure thing. Last one to the office has to buy coffee. No fair! I just ran! They run downstairs, pushing each other. Kazuki slowly walks away, thinking. There's no way we can work together on this case. They're too boisterous. They'll probably scare him away, if anything. Step by step. Kazuki thinks how he will persuade Suzumi. Knowing her attitude to him, he knows that the conversation will be hard. And deep down, however, he hopes that she will accept the request. No one else like Phantom killed so many people and still remained elusive. His nature, way of thinking, and cunningness has caused a wave of paranoia. Perhaps this case is more complicated than we think. Maybe we really, really should take care of him. I guess Akito's right. The police really are useless, and he's starting to get better at claiming more victims. As he walks down, he starts to get convinced that pursuing the Phantom was the right decision. He passes a dark corridor, dimly lit with only a few light bulbs flashing the way. He feels a hand on his shoulder. Oh no, a hand! Who is it? You're late, as always. Kaoru? Have you ever been on time for the meeting? You look pretty messy. Your hair. A little messy. Not terribly messy. I could ask you the same thing. Alright, calm down. I wasn't grilling you. I was looking through some documents and settling some personal business. What's your excuse? I was on the roof talking? Kazuki looks straight ahead in the distance. He's not going to explain why he was late, and it doesn't look like Kaori is looking for an explanation. They continue walking until they reach the end of the corridor. Two hear Akito and Aki laughing behind the door. Kazuki puts his hand on the doorknob, then firmly presses it. The door opens, and the two enter the room. It's just a matter of time before Suzumi says something about me being late. Right. Will we finally get to meet this girl? I want to know who she is! Seems like the boss or something. 
That's what it seems like. Or the leader, or whatever you want to call it. Karu enters the first. As Kazuki closes the door, he hears a familiar voice. Oh, I'm sorry, Kazuki. I didn't know that you. Oh, hello! Me. We finally meet you. You seem to be quite mad. We are honored that you could visit us. Hmm. You're pissed. You can cut the sarcasm, Suzumi. You know, Kari entered the same time I did. I think she likes to give you it pain. I don't think she cares about her. Well, she was running an errand, so she's excused. You, on the other hand. You are late! <laughs> Kazuki moves to the chair and sits on it. All eyes are on him. Can we just continue? Look, I'm late. Happens to everyone. Yeah, I've been late to things before. Suzumi approaches the projector and starts the slideshow. The first picture shows a man with a spear driven through his skull. Oh, a spear? I would like to start our meeting with this case number. Psst, Kazuki, remember our deal. You promised, and you know I won't leave you alone unless you do it. No, you really do seem like the person who won't leave him alone if he doesn't. <laughs> what deal? You promised Akito that you asked Suzumi to take care of the Phantom case, remember? And when we take into account the place, time, and the technique of the perpetrator, we can draw the conclusion that this accident wasn't an ordinary one. Look, calm down. We've got a whole bunch of other work, Dan. We don't know if Suzumi will agree anyway. Are you kidding? This is the case we need to work on! This is the biggest killing spree in decades, and you think we're playing games? Suzumi turns around and calmly responds. Akito and Akimi are... Aki are... surprised as the reply. Am I interrupting something? Just a little conversation over here, that's all! So sorry that I'm boring you with the case details. I'm guessing you already read this earlier? Anyway, what do you have to say about this, Akito? Hmm, uh... Well... <laughs> Kazuki wanted to ask you something. Come on, Kazuki! This is our chance! Kazuki feels like everyone is focused on him again. He wants to talk about the Phantom case in private, but with all this commotion, it seems like a talented performance is coming up, and this shows for everyone. Ever since I've joined you here, I've tried to ensure that every case was resolved and every murder located and sent to prison. Grussils. I wonder if that's how you pronounce that. The main objective is to focus on the case that police can't handle. Each of us contribute to the organization's perfect organism, and every case we get we're focused on finishing. It's not a secret that Igrasil is the last resort for the police force. Ah, there we go. But Igrisil. what are you getting at? I'm glad you asked. The thing is, there's one case that we haven't put a dent in. You know, the man that makes our lives a living hell? Got a little sweat on her face there. Hey, hey. Your face keeps going back and forth. Mmm, eh, mmm, eh, mmm. Huh? Uh, the Phantom. Kazuki's words are fouled by a grave silence. Through the open window, there's a mix of street buzz and roaring. Everyone in the room stares at Kazuki. That's pretty loud street buzz and roaring. Sounds like I'm freaking on the street. I'm sorry to say that. I think it's a little loud. And it hits the fan in three, two, one. Come on, Akito. What? I'm just kidding. You got what you wanted, Akito. You wanted him to ask. He's asking here. 
Have you ever been serious enough to keep a straight face? Yeah, when I was 10 years old, and my dog was in my car. Worst five minutes of my life right there. <laughs> five minutes. So only five minutes? <laughs> we didn't have a dog. So he made that up. Enough! Do you think that this type of discussion is amusing? Not really. If anything, they're predictable right, right down to the end. Personally, I think we should focus on this phantom case. We already know that he's been hiding from the police for a year now. Besides, we could get more done knowing that this case was closed. Wouldn't you agree? Hmm. Interesting. Alright, everyone out but Kazuki. Everybody gets up and obeys her command. As the door closes, Suzumi goes to a window and stares at the horizon. You're a strange one, you know that, Kazuki? If you say so. I'm intrigued by the way you think. When I first met you, you were quiet and aloof. But you knew what you wanted. Since the Phantom struck, I was wondering what was the right time to work on this case. It's your call, boss. I know, but I have this strange feeling that we'll be biting more than we can chew if we take this case. We could get involved in something mysterious, something dangerous that we don't understand. And maybe some of you might die. Just thinking that the possibility might be there. Or at least they get, get into close to dying. In dangerous situations, that is. She is saying something dangerous. Cause you know, if you start investigating him, and he's a pretty if he's a pretty good killer and he notices, he might actually try to kill you. To stop you. Well, if it makes you feel any better, this wasn't my idea. Akito asked you. I could see that a mile away. Well, he did was talking there, and you kind of came up to him. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Am I boring you? Am I boring you? How did you know? When the Phantom attacked for the first time, Akito came to me and asked if we could work on it immediately. But I said no. I didn't know at the time, but I thought this was for the better. After a while, Kaoru and Aki asked, but I still refused. So, everyone's asked, pretty much, if to do this case? That's what it seems like. Now, however, you're talking to me about it. So how can I say no? But, could I ask you something? Go on. Go for it. What do you think about him? The Phantom, I mean. The Phantom. An outstanding individual, a perfect killer, sophisticated in what he does, derives pleasure from it. Hmm. His case could be very interesting. So far he has already committed three murders, or at least three which are in some way connected with him. I wonder if there are victims we don't know about. That is always, that is always possible. I mean... People go missing all the time, and you might not know that it, they've been murdered. And they could be murdered, and their body could be somewhere. Kazuki. Just thinking. Maybe this is the case we need to work on now. Maybe I need this to gain some peace of mind. I know it's crazy, but what this could help out is sort out things since my parents' death. Help sort out. I don't, I don't think that out needs to be there. I could help sort out. All right. Look, there's one thing I forgot to mention. I have the theory that the Phantom might be related to your parents' death. Uh-oh. It's not like something just broke. It's time to prove to the world that he grossed 
Igrusil? I forgot how she pronounced it now. It is more than a division to settle petty murders. What am I saying? All more, all murders are important. Hey, Kazuki, are you still here? Yes. I was a little thought lost in my thoughts. Probably more than a little. You've crushed the glass. I don't know how, but you were staring at the wall and crushed it. What glass? I'm confused in what he's talking about. Did he have a glass in his hand? Is there a glass on the wall? <laughs> and how did he crush it? Did he punch it? Did he have it in his hand? I'm just trying to figure out what this glass that he's breaking. Or does he have mind powers? <laughs> I've decided, Suzumi. The time has come. We need to do with the Phantom. We need to figure him out this time. All of us can do it if we work together. He isn't perfect. Not by a long shot. There must be some evidence he's left behind. <coughs> the door opens. Akito and Aki fall. Surprised at the opening, Kurori enters as well. Looking at some documents. It's about time. Thanks for finally getting some sense in that head of yours. Suzuki and Suzumi look at looks at them and then at Kurori. A bit upset that the three were eavesdropping. I told you this was a bad idea. And now we're going to get scolded. Yeah, how dare you listen in? Now you deserve a spanking! <laughs> You're bruising my hand. Can you stand up? You're getting fatter. <laughs> You're getting fatter. You're the one. Oh, never mind. The two of them straighten up their clothes. So, we should call ourselves something cool. I was thinking the Phantom Team. Maybe? Nah, it doesn't sound very cool. Yes! Big Bro, you're a genius! For God's sake. <gasps> what happened to your hand, Kazuki? Yes. What the hell happened to his hand? Kazuki looks at his wounded hand. Nothing. Just a little incident, that's all. Alright. We mustn't waste any more time. Akito and Aki, you'll take over the documentation. Look at all the files on the Phantom's crimes, as well as murders of which the perpetrator couldn't be clearly defined. You need to look for anything that the police may have omitted. Kaoru, you'll help me with verification. But Aki and I were supposed to go to a charity concert today. You want us to let little orphans starve? <laughs> That's alright, the orphans will be fine. But it's meant to take place tomorrow, Big Bro. Oh, really? Well, never mind then. Let's go do our thing. I want to have a progress report by midnight tomorrow. End of discussion. Uh, yes, ma'am. What about Kazuki? Why is he doing nothing? Kazuki has to do something else. You look at this and see how deep the cut is. Sure. I think we've already got this down. Can we leave now? By all means, yes. Except for you, Akito. Where do you think you're going? Yes, where are you going, Akito? You're going to help out as well. Well, I've got a stack of documents to review, don't I? Well... That could have waited until tomorrow. But now that you mention it, fix the door you broke. <laughs> fix that damn door! Oh, man, why does it always have to be my fault? Because it probably is your fault, man. Because he leaves, smiling to himself. Hmm, it'll be humorous to see how Akito fixes that door. I don't think he's ever done home improvement before. This world is terribly chaotic. There's no order or regularity. This crowd is making me suffocate. At the very least, the pollution is a nuisance. 
I have to get home as fast as I can. And he turns left and follows the road towards his apartment in a hurry. He passes streets full of random people, occasionally nudging elbows with others. There's a huge crowd on the sidewalk. Kazuki feels like he's being carried by the waves of people surrounding him. I can't. I can't do this. He breaks free from the throngs of people, jumps sideways and catches his breath as he turns to an alley leading to a park. After about 30 minutes, he reaches his apartment. So many people here again. What are they doing with their lives? Don't they have jobs? What a tiring day. I need a moment to rest. Kazuki sits in his chair and falls into a deep sleep. What? What time is it? The clock on Kazuki's phone flashes 8.08 p.m. Mm, it's probably Akito. What does he want? Maybe I should ignore him. Well then again, he'd probably call until I answer. I should probably pick it up. Hey, Akito? Morning. I'm not bothering you, am I? It's a little late for that, isn't it? Oh wait, no. Of course not. Are you sure? You sound a bit strange. Akito, just hurry up. What do you want? Well, I'm just here to see if you want to go to a meeting we're having at the Red Dragon tomorrow after work. A meeting? What's Red Dragon? A restaurant? A bar? You're joking. You're the last person I want to see after work. Not a chance. Ha ha! I almost believed you! You're so funny. You know that? Well, it's true. Well, even if you don't want to, Suzumi's forcing us to do this. So she said to meet there. No way. I'm not going. And why did she have to call me now? <sighs> Suzumi knew you were going to say that. She said... If you don't come tomorrow, you won't be able to leave the office next week, and all the paperwork is going to be forwarded to you. <laughs> Heart mark. <laughs> Trust me, you want to come. How come blackmail is legal for her and not me? Because she's the boss. Anyways, the taxi will be waiting for you at 11.40 a.m. Don't be late, please. Are you sure you're not a comedian at night? Do you have anything else to say? Make sure to do your hair before you leave. It looked hideous yesterday. See ya! I don't think he cares what you think about his hair. Kazuki hangs up as he notices his scarred hand. I should take care of this after I wake up. Let's see, the wound isn't too large. I'll just wash it again. Oh, it's almost sealed up, so I guess it's nothing too bad. I'll take a quick shower, grab a snack, and then head back to bed. Kasuki doesn't sleep well that night. He tosses and turns as dreams filled that with strange people and symbols keep him up at night. He doesn't remember them and can't understand them. 11.30 a.m. His clock rings freely. Forced him to get up and switch it off. I'm going to be late again. Will I ever sleep normally? Well, the only normal thing about me is that I'm going to be late again. I hope that Suzumi won't whip me up with another insult. After Kazuki heads out of his apartment, he realizes that the taxi has been there for a while. Apparently the driver received instructions not to worry about the client being late and waited patiently. Good morning. I've been waiting for you. For me? How do you know I'm the one you're waiting for? Tall, slim, dark jacket, dead tired. According to my client, it's definitely you. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. I guess we should go. If I remember correctly, we're headed to the Red Dragon. Yes. Despite several attempts to start the conversation about the driver, the trip continues in silence. After 30 minutes of driving, I reached the restaurant. Thanks. How much do I pay? No worries. You've already been paid. 
probably the one nice thing that'll happen to me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Kazuki comes out of the vehicle and closes the door behind him. Stands in front of the building with the mascot, Red Dragon. Through the big windows, he sees his colleagues at the table. Oh, great. Now I get to see more of my lovely co-workers. He grabs the handle and slowly but firmly presses it. The bell rings, announcing the arrival of the next customer. Hey! We're over here! If it's not your face, it's your voice. So annoying. Do you always have to behave like that, Akito? Good afternoon, everyone! Hi, Aki! Apparently, Akito likes to be the center of attention. Don't pay him any mind. He'll just be attracted to the next shiny object he sees. <laughs> Probably you will. Hey, I'm just doing this so he notices us. What if he didn't? <laughs> what if he didn't notice you? I think you'd probably notice. Hey, here they are. Oh, yes. Wave your arms around so the two other people in this place can see us. If you want, I could get someone to put a tracker on him. Then you'd know where he'd be forever. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? I don't think anyone... Well, maybe someone does want to know where he is forever. So they, they can not be near him. <laughs> does it matter? No, I don't think so. Kazuki enters the table. How do you how do you enter a table? <laughs> I would love to know how you enter a table. Akito, give me your number next time. There's such a huge crowd here. I have trouble finding you. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to give me your number. I mean, I could not see you waving your hands or anything. This is so busy here. Just in case I needed to call you. You see? You're on time, as always. Oh, joking, are we? On time, huh? Thank you for your appreciation. Punctuality is my specialty. But that's probably because you didn't do your hair, right, Big Bro? I think that that was really a problem. Because even if I had time, I don't have a comb. You don't have a comb? <laughs> you, so your, your hair is always a mess. Is that what, it, what this is about? Why are they talking about his hair? Listen up, everyone. Let's organize a donation pool for Kazuki's Comb Fund. Conversation about his hair. He needs a comb. Comb Fund. Times are hard, and we need to combine our efforts pronto. Don't forget a new alarm clock. Are we done yet? Can I go now? Calm down, we're here to relax. In case you didn't know, I like to party too. The real work begins tomorrow. Why not take the opportunity to spend a little time off with the family? Family? Are you talking about you guys? You guys as in the family? We're a family now? What are we gonna eat? Good question, Aki. I've already gotten hungry from waiting for a certain someone. I'm starving. What do they serve today? Yo, Aki, fetch me a menu, will ya? Why me? Because you're the youngest and I'm your older brother. It's my right. <laughs> I'm the older one. Do as I say. No, this time you bring me a menu. <laughs> That's right, you bring her a menu. All eyes focus on Aki. I'll tell mom that you used me as a slave and put me in danger. I don't think I have a problem making a story up. You could always just tell mom that he tried to touch you. <laughs> now that would be even probably more dirty. That, that would probably be even more wicked than just saying you put him in danger. Fine. I needed a drink anyway. 
everyone bursts into laughter. But we're the little ones, I guess. I always thought of you as the gentle type. You could have asked me politely. There are a lot of things you don't know about me. Well, if you're going to get a drink, can you fetch me some juice, pretty please? The same for me, if you don't mind. A glass of dry white wine. <sighs> and anything for you, Kazuki? You can get me a beer. Beer, please. Holy shit! He thinks the same as me! I was like, give me a beer! Kazuki's like, give me a beer! Um... Hey, just give him a damn beer! But, not like the last time when you bought that cheapest one and then got excited that you could buy two bottles. So the second cheapest. Got it. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Akito leaves, repeating what to take for everyone under his breath. Going to the counter, he turns and shouts to the crowd. What kind of juice do you want? <laughs> what kind of juice do you want? Seriously? I'll take some orange juice! Does he behave like this at home? Oh, it's even worse there. Wait, I thought the charity concert was today. Weren't you going with Akito? Yes, the people there are gathering money for a wounded girl who injured both of her legs in a car accident. They're holding a fundraiser to purchase some stuff so she can walk normally. Do you want to come with us? I'd love to go. I have nothing better to do anyways. What do you think, Kaoru? I'm free, but I promised my dad that I'd be helping him out, so I might be late. What matters is that you'll be there! Thank you! What about you, Kazuki? Will you honor us with your presence? Oh! His presence would be an honor! Why not go? As he stares at a glass. Pretending that he didn't hear the question. You're late, not deaf. Did you hear me? Hmm. Will you make me feel guilty if I say that I have more important things to do? Well, it wouldn't be surprising. You always skip these things, you monster. Yeah, you damn monster! You have no heart! Do you can you not think of others? I've got an idea to get you to come. Nothing will make me go there. Read my lips. Nothing. Akito comes back carrying a tray of drinks. There you are. Well, at least you didn't get the cheapest stuff. I have some great news, big bro. Kaoru and Suzumi are going to the concert with us. What about Kazuki? Is he coming with us? It'll be fun. I think that our definitions of fun are way different. Calm down. It's up to you. No one's forcing you. Now, let's focus on the more important issues. What are we going to eat? Did you bring the menu, Akito? <laughs> yeah, grab the damn menu. Didn't you say that you wanted chicken? Are you kidding me? I never even said that. Oh, no. chicken and Thai sauce with prawn. It'll be good. D trust me on this one. Okay? <laughs> he, he already ordered. He already ordered for everyone. Yeah, I trust you like the time you said that the killer we were looking for was supposed to be a monk. Hey, nobody's perfect. It's not my fault that those women wore the same clothes as he did. In addition, <laughs> The witnesses testified that they saw a monk. 
Did you say women? That's interesting. You're the one that fell for it. Meanwhile, the waiter brings the dish. Well, that one looks like a waitress. If what you ordered is any good... Maybe we should wait 15 minutes until Akito finishes. And we'll see if he survives! And what do we do if he survives? Eat the cold chicken? <laughs> We'll just use these forks to finish him ourselves! <laughs> oh, yeah, stab him! Stab him! Who know you're missing out on him. Better start eating, cause he's getting cold. Hey! But anyways... Um, what's up, Suzumi? We never have time to talk like normal friends. Oh, we're friends now? What do you want to talk about? There are so many things, and we certainly don't have time to talk about everything. Uh. Oh, he freaking burped! <laughs> what the hell? Nikito finishes his meal and belches loudly. Oh, yes! That was good. Did you eat everything and left nothing for everyone else? Goodness! What? It could happen to anyone. Nah, you let that burp out on purpose. That wasn't just no. You had to fill it. Yeah, I think you forced that burp out. You're right, it happens. But with you, we can hear it like a plane's engine. It was pretty loud. It sounded like someone burped in my ear. Could you act like a normal person for once, big bro? It wouldn't harm you if you were a bit more serious. Well, write a formal complaint, and maybe I'll consider it. That's enough of that. Getting back on topic, there's one thing that people in town say things, but really never mean it. I mean, how can we find out? I know what you want, Aki. What you're asking is... Suzumi takes a glass of wine and smells it. Then she slowly takes the first sip. She takes the glass off her mount, and still staring at it, says, How did my father die? All eyes are focused on Suzumi. Dry wine. I love its taste. The bitter grapes on the southern slopes make this a perfect experience. Suzu. It was a warm September morning. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were having breakfast together and sitting at a white table. On it was everything I could ever hope to eat. It was Saturday, the day of my 12th birthday. I always strived to be the best I could be with physical activities, especially since I knew my dad wanted a son. I am who I am thanks to him. By the time I was 10, I trained in different martial arts and self-defense techniques. My father taught me how to see every tiny mistake in someone's stance, the mechanics of injuries, and what objects would inflict certain wounds. When he went to work, he would kiss my mother, assure her that we'd eat breakfast again, and that everything would be okay. He always said to me, no one knows what the future holds, but despite what happens, we must move forward. I remember those words like my father would have said it yesterday. The next day, we got up at dawn and were waiting for him. When we heard the doorbell, Mother ran to open it. She didn't return for a long time, and after a while, I felt like something had happened. Three men and one woman, all dressed in black, went to my room with my mother. She was a bit absent-minded throughout the whole thing. They wanted me to go with the woman to another room, but my mother said that my father gave me a thick skin and that I could handle whatever would happen. My father, along with five other agents, 
had been working on finding a group of drug traffickers for several months. On Saturday night, a drug delivery at the port in town was supposed to take place. A large amount of cocaine was to be transferred to local traffickers. The plan was simple. Step in, corner them, and in case of doubt, kill. A run-of-the-mill sting operation. Except somebody gave the traffickers a tip. When the agents and my father entered the unloading area, the criminals were surrounded and put their weapons down voluntarily. Father realized that something was wrong. When they knelt on the ground, he heard a series of shots. It was coming from a nearby yacht, and a group of shooters killed the agents. Each of them sustained several bullet wounds before dying. It was a complete massacre. My father managed to dodge and hide behind a nearby pile of boxes. But before he could call for support, a stray bullet went through his leg, followed by more shots to his chest. He wouldn't go down without a fight, and killed a few of the criminals before he went down for good. Among the evidence was a single bullet in this clip. I decided to take it as a symbol of his last dying wish, to always look forward despite adversity. And that's why you see a bullet on my desk. Is that everything you want to know? Suzumi so finishes her story. Airs at her glass of wine and finishes it in one heartily gulp. Oh my god! I didn't know it was like that! I'm so sorry! Don't apologize for the things that you can't control. Life isn't a game where you can reset whenever you feel threatened. It's something I have to live with. Well, I'm not going to apologize since it's not how I roll. But I'm curious. Admit that you can't say sorry, will ya? Jeez. Kito, shut up! How do you know all these details? I thought they were classified. The day before the incident, cameras were installed. They figured my father wasn't clever enough to check beforehand, but they were dead wrong. Were they caught later? After a while, they were caught and sentenced to life in prison. So that's how it ended? Now I guess we know a little more about you now. This is exactly why I decided to devote my life to catching criminals and murderers. Because of my father's death, I established Igrasil. I wanted the truth of these cases to come to light. Remember, there are no accidents in life. Sooner or later, even the most cunning murderer makes a mistake. When that happens, we'll be there to catch him. Oh. And that story I told earlier? For your ears only. Tell anyone and you're going to be fired. Or worse. Oh, yes! And what will that worse be? Uh, of course. It must be hard for you too, Kazuki. For me? I think Suzumi means that it must be hard losing a parent at a young age. I guess we can relate to each other. After all, we did lose someone close to us very quickly. But you survived. Obviously. You idiot. <laughs> That's obvious that I survived. I'm here, ain't I? <laughs> How did it happen? Do you remember anything? I'm not one for apologies, but I'm sorry for giving you a really blunt version. The car they were driving fell off the road, and they died immediately. From that picture, it was one bloody mess. <laughs> Looks like they just got, like, squashed, and all the blood went dripping all out of them. No, I don't remember what happened to me, and no! I wasn't seriously injured. I can hear some pain intertwined with the sarcasm. Is everything okay? 
I would be wondering if he wasn't seriously injured or anything, but they ended up dying. Like, what the hell happened to you? Get thrown from the car before it went over or something? Because how did you not end up getting hurt like they did? And that's 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 would be my question. And that's really definitely a pretty good a pretty good question to have. Like, how the hell did you survive and they didn't? Something happened within there. Did you get thrown from the car? Did they throw you from the car? Did someone throw you from the car? Did you jump from the car? Let's just say that, for some people, it's hard to talk about these things. But you can be open to us. We're friends, right? Sure, Aki. I think you would be a nice friend. I'm friends with you. I think Kazuki is the type of man who prefers to keep some things to himself. gonna tell them that there was someone else at the crash site. I remember that this person pulled me out of the burning car and I was screaming. Okay, so he was he was in the car, he didn't get thrown from it. Alright. He was pulled from the car. His face. I don't remember it clearly. It was too dark to recognize anything special about him. After he pulled me out, he left me a dozen meters away from the burning vehicle. I perfectly remember screams of my parents. They didn't want to die. Who would? The last thing I remember was an explosion. Powerful enough to make me lose consciousness. I woke up when the ambulance arrived. But it was too late for my parents. Death came unexpectedly. The only thing that bothers me is who was the person who helped me out and if he had anything to do with that accident. Yeah, that is a pretty good question. I mean... Why would he run off? And all that stuff. And why did he pull you out and leave your parents in there to die? Unless they were like trapped or something and he couldn't help them. Maybe Yggdrasil will help me in solving this riddle. But not now. Not at this point. So everyone, how was the meal? Pretty good. Am I right? Hmm. I don't know. Considering it was a surprise, it tasted pretty good. Oh, she says it's good. Chicken could have been more rare. Huh. My little sister, a food critic. <laughs> a food critic. Why did you order the same dish for all of us? <laughs> what? Is this an interview? Sorry, officer. I didn't know I needed an ulterior motive to have a delicious meal with my friends. It's fine, Kazuki. Let it go. I might have picked that one anyways. I'm thinking Akito was thinking of something else in mind. Of course I didn't. Kazuki turns the leaflet of the menu and sees an ad. Five size sets of chicken with shrimp get the six one free. Coincidence? Most likely. Akito? <laughs> I have officially lost my faith in boys. How could you use us like that, big bro? His... This is the second time that his little figure goes bouncing around. <laughs> I guess that's what you... Well, I'm quite impressed by your frugal and cunning nature. Even I wouldn't have thought up something like this to get out of paying for a meal. I've always believed in my abilities. Wait, is that a compliment or an insult? I hope you had your money fun because I think we're going to get into some serious business in a second. You're right, Kaoru. Someone broke into a grocery store two days ago. The thief tried to steal cigarettes and two bottles of scotch. And one more thing. He also stole two chickens from the meat counter. That's hilarious. You guys are comedians. We should start a comedy club. 
I'm not kidding. Oh, come on. It's just a joke. We're friends, right? What's up with you? We can divide this free chicken evenly. <laughs> he wanted the free chicken. Oh, I will share now. <laughs> My name is Chicken. Mr. Chicken. Bwok, bwok! Like he does comes red with embarrassment. Anyways, I think we may have a clue to the recent crime. There's a poultry farm not far from here. I think this might be a clue. Perfect! Alright, big bro, I'm not mad at you anymore. Oh no. Are you serious? Are we checking this out right now? But what about the phantom case? You won't miss it. Especially after that stunt you just pulled. Everyone looks at Ikito seriously. And he shrugs it off. Fine. If I have to. We'll work on the phantom case in the office tomorrow at noon. As for Akito, we'll prepare documents for the grocery store robbery so you can spend all day looking at chickens. Sound like a deal? <laughs> all day looking at chickens, man. You get to look at chickens all day. So you're serious? You guys get to work on the phantom case while I have to go on a wild goose chase? No, chicken case. Chicken chase. You're gonna go chase chickens. It's more like a wild chicken chase. Yeah, what she said. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll be done. Seriously? Serious. You know I never joke, Akito. See, she don't joke. Great, Mr. Chicken. Maybe you can catch a serial poultry thief once and for all. <laughs> a serial poultry thief. All the shopkeepers will be grateful. Who knows? Maybe they'll give you a discount. Everyone bursts into laughter while well, Akito sits and stares at the table. Don't worry, I'll help you, big bro. Lee, your sister's nice enough to help you out, man. Well, I appreciate that we're all a bit silly today, but I hope that tomorrow you'll get down to business with the same energy, alright? Alright, so what's next? We'll all go. Well, maybe not all of us. Hmm. Hey, I'm coming with you tonight. We promised. Fine, we're going to that charity concert. Let's meet at 6 p.m. at our home. I'm going to catch up with you later. I still have an errand to run beforehand. Yes. Didn't you say you had to go? Do something with your dad? I'll be on time, like always. Good for you, Suzume. Have a nice day, ungrateful little- Don't make fun of us. Maybe it'd do you some good to shut your mouth. Don't you agree, Kaoru? In good time. All in good time. So, you're sure that you can't be persuaded? Come with us? Akito, how long have you known me? Well, a while, I guess. Have you ever persuaded me to do something I didn't want to do? We got you here, didn't we? <laughs> that is a good one. You did persuade him to go here. You, you could say that, for the most part. But that might be more of the boss than you, when you think about it. You were just the tool. Yes, we know that you're an individualist. If you change your mind, you know where to find us. Uh, whatever. We've discussed the concert. What about tomorrow, Suzumi? When do you need us in the office? 10 a.m. would be fine. Will you all be on time, or will there be any exceptions, Kazuki? You know, time is just relative. 
all created for our convenience. Does it really exist? Don't get all philosophical on me. We're not at school, you know. Kazuki, I have to be honest. Sometimes I want to strangle you. <laughs> strangle him! Strangle him! Well, I'll humor you this time, and I'll try and be there with a few minutes to spare. Could I get a taxi? The last guy was a lifesaver. Could I get one too? My taxi allowance was eaten up by a... a dog. Yep, totally a dog. That was an awful lie. It wasn't eaten by no dog! Ugh, fine. But don't be late. So, are we good? It's already 2 p.m. Sure thing. We just need to get the bill all settled. Don't forget, Akito needs that free chicken. Kazuki starts to smile. It's so funny. Look carefully at the leaflet. Yeah, I noticed it too. What do you mean? Well, today's Monday. Turn out, this offer is only available Wednesday and Friday. Well, looks like Mr. Chicken is just rolling in the bad luck today. Oh, he has to pay for it! Agito comes back and sees the smiling faces of friends who are laughing non-stop. Say one word and you're dead. Akito, come on! Are we going? I'd like to leave. I'm not surprised. Everybody heads out to the busy street. Thanks for the great time, you guys. Maybe one day we can go out for an all-day hangout. I have an idea where to go, but I'll keep that a secret until we get further into the case. I think that sounds like a nice little plan. See you later, everyone. Bye. Are you going to head out too, Kazuki? No. I have to take care of something. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, see you later. Kazuki continues standing and looking at everyone disappears around the corner. He looks ahead to a busy street. What if it's true? That what I remember wasn't an accident. What if the person who helped me was the Phantom? King of Precision. The perfect killer. Why did he save me? Did he have some plan for this? I have the theory that the Phantom might be related to your parents' death. Ugh. It's all Akito's fault I'm in this mess. If he didn't pressure me, I could have forgotten all of this. Now the Phantom is all I think about. I wish he were just a ghost so I could f forget about him. But he's not. He's a real human being. A man with flesh and blood, and he's still out there. I know that he isn't perfect, and sooner or later he'll mess up. But who will be next? And if Akito's right about this guy, who wants his pattern? We need to find out so we can prevent the next murder. It's a race against time for someone that might not even exist. No, he has to be real. If he wasn't, then my parents would still be alive. I wish everything could go back the way it was, but it can't. It can never be the same. Well, the whole parent things would still be alive if he was a real type of thing, would be if they were connected to begin with. So, that sentence right there, does that mean they are connected? I mean, it's just a question that was brought up. You've thought about multiple times. It's kind of implying that it is, at the moment in time, from what I can see, that it is connected. In some fashion. That's what I'm getting from it so far. Kazuki slowly lifts his eyes. Now is the time for Phantom to go. Disappear from this world. He'll be shredded to dust. It's only a matter of time when he makes a mistake. And then, Yggdrasil will catch him. Kazuki clenches his fists and screams through his teeth. I am coming for you. Meanwhile, back at the Red Dragon. Wait, are you sure they're not here? Suzumi told me to meet up with her at noon. Suzumi? Wait, it's 2.30 p.m.? Shoot, my watch must have died when I was on the train. Well, thank you anyways. 
You don't have a cell phone? As David walks out, he notices someone on a screen. Huh? Oh, hi there. I guess you wouldn't know anything about Igrisil's whereabouts, would you? Don't worry, I'm not a bad guy. Far from it, actually. I'm David Lawford. It's very nice to meet you. Bah, uh, hello! This place is pretty awesome, not going to lie. I'm still getting lost on the streets, can't figure out the transit system for the life of me. David writes down something in his notepad. Oh! Sorry for ignoring you, I'm just jotting some notes here. It helps with transition. After all, as an international intern, I need all the help I can get. See? Celebrate Joseph and Kay's first anniversary. Ah! Oops, wrong page. <laughs> David flips through his notepad. Congratulate players on completing the demo. Alright, sounds simple enough. Well, on behalf of the whole team, thank you for playing this demo. We've had a lot of people working tirelessly to bring you this quality adventure, and we're excited to say that we hope to get a complete release out later this year. But I'm looking forward to seeing that. David? That means we'll have much more Icarus in the future. I actually can't wait to find out what happens to the Phantom Killer, to be honest. It's sure to be a treat. Well, anyways, I just want to say thank you for being very patient while the team develops this title. We appreciate any support and feedback, and don't forget to share this with all your friends. In the meantime, thank you for listening to the rambling of supporting character. So I get to be in a few more scenes, at least. <laughs> I should probably try and call a taxi. See you soon. Bye. There are so many. <laughs> Jesus. What? A burp? What the? <laughs> I burp in the line before Akito burps, and I get mad at him for burping. Well, I got a burp for you. I don't know how disgusting that feels, but I was trying. It's for the sake of acting and realism. I hope you all appreciate it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's really disgusting, though. I'm so sorry. No, you're not. You're not sorry! Holy crap, Suzumi has a long line. Jesus. You could have asked me politely. There are a lot of things you don't know about me. I like, I like There Hockey's are a lot voice. of things you don't know about me. I don't know how to read. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go my side. <laughs> my guy. Hi. Take two. You could have asked me politely. There are a lot of things you don't. Oh goodness. <gasps> Those you. I like Aki's voice. I like her voice. Of all the characters, it's my favorite one so far. Alright, well that's the demo, we finished that off there! Well, you know, I have some mixed thoughts. Of course it's an unfinished demo. There's definitely improvements that can be made. I could see plenty of them. Definitely some adjustments to sound that need to be made. Those sound effects are way too loud compared to the rest of the, uh, the game, I think. I think they're way too loud, a lot of the sound effects. As well as, you know, plenty of other things. Of course, as it is, as I said, it's an unfinished game. I expect, you know, plenty of work to be done to it to actually improve it. But, you know, I am interested in seeing what the hell this murder phantom guy is. Or what the hell that might happen. I wonder if anything else will happen. Any questions? Many questions. And if there is any real connection between, you know, Kazuki's uh, and his, his parents and all that stuff and, and this phantom dude. Well, guys, I will leave a link to where you can check this game out yourself, well, the demo, as well as the link to the Kickstarter, and, you know, I'll leave a link to the uh, developer's uh, the Bloody uh, Chronicles uh, you know, Twitter account, if you wish to tweet to them, or whatever. Well, thank you all for watching this. You all have a great day.